we're checking the valve lash, aka clearance. And the way you want to do that is check the, the distance between the back side of the cam lobe, the per part that's perfectly round, so you point the lobes 180 degrees away from the buckets, which rest on top of the springs and valve assembly. And so here we have six thousandths on the intake side is the minimum clearance. And as you can see, that fits nicely. It's tight, but it fits. So we're at the minimum clearance on cylinder one then. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this. This is why you need assembly lube. Okay, so 180 degrees. And that fits. It's tight, but it fits. So it's between six thousandths and ten thousandths is the maximum. Okay, so there's cylinder six is all the way up. And that fits also tight, as does that one. <clears throat> okay, cylinder two I already checked. <clears throat> cylinder four, last one on the intake side. That fits as well. Still tight. This engine only had uh, 52,000 miles on it when we decided to freshen it up. So really, all of this is going to be at the minimum spec. We already did the exhaust cam, and that uh, checked out at 10,000. Supposed to be between 10 and 14,000, and they were all at the minimum 10,000. So this one was the tightest one and uh, they all checked out. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw the cam covers on now to keep this protected from the elements and then put spark plugs in the holes so that nothing can fall down in the cylinders. I watched a video and a guy actually had a small washer fall down into the cylinder so he had to take everything back apart to find that. We are back. And we're tightening down the camshaft caps. That's these things. Toyota spec is 14 foot pounds. We have a nice craftsman wrench here that is set at exactly 14 foot pounds. So it's nice and easy, not much. Doesn't take gorilla strength to do this. Uh, back to the camshafts, the Kelfords are. 9.95 uh, lift. Now that is a dimension that refers to the amount that it opens the valve. And it's an internal combustion engine and the valves are what let in the air mixed with fuel mixture. In this case it's fuel injection. Um, and so the valves let that mixture in and the dimension is 9.95 of lift. That's how much it opens that valve. That's a lot. These are big cams. It's going to sound like a muscle car. You may say it's a rice burner. Straight six. It's only a three liter. If I wanted a three liter, I'd buy an ocean spray. Well, I did. Anyway, um, it's going to sound like a muscle car. I promise you that. You're going to like it. I wanted to thank everybody that's helped me with this. Adam McLaughlin did all the machine work. This thing is blueprinted and balanced. The Wisco asymmetric pistons and the Manly tri-beam rods which are shot peened. Uh, it's the latest and greatest. 
uh, for this engine, for turbos especially. Um, and he balanced, weighed the rods on both sides, so where they attach to the crank and then where they attach to the piston, he weighed them on either side so they are perfectly balanced and matched with the piston of um, also, so you weigh, here's how it goes. No matter how cl close or perfect all of these parts are, which this, the tolerance is very tight, they're still not going to be exactly the same. And so what Al did is he weighed the pistons, weight of every single piston, there's six of them. And then he weighed the rods, weight of every single rod. Okay, so then you take the ones that weigh a certain amount and you pair them up so that the rotating assembly is equal to the next piston and rod combination. So you try to balance that all out. Uh, and what that does is makes it so when you're revving 8,000 revolutions per minute in this engine, it's all balanced. So it's not gonna throw anything off on one side or the other or have weird vibrations. Now this engine is already statically and dynamically balanced. Uh, Al also took the crankshaft from this and checked all the tolerances and clearances uh, to make sure that it's perfect, and it was, and then he checked it to make sure it's balanced. It was from the factory. These are already balanced, but he made it even more perfect. Uh, so this engine's gonna run even better, and I'm getting pretty excited. So thanks, Al. And also thanks Robert Roll because he has kind of been my guide in the clouds telling me all of the different things that I need to do because he built NASCAR engines uh, before his accident. So he knows exactly how to do this. He can do it in his sleep. So thank you to Robert.